All right, so first of all, this should be over here. And second of all, uh, we're gonna be modeling the tires in this section. Um, but before we do that, someone shared a quick, uh, neat little trick with me uh, in the last section that I could use to model the wheels. And uh, we could also use it to model tires. I'm gonna show you another way, but if you wanted to try this out, you could. So here we have the wheel that we modeled in the last section with the array modifier and the uh, object offset. If we didn't do that, and we still model this just a single spoke the same exact way we did before, keeping in mind um, the angles of the edges are, are correct, uh, there's a cool little trick that you can um, that you can do. I actually forgot the shortcut for this, and um, I never knew the name of it, so I never figured it out. But thanks uh, for that comment, so that we can benefit from this. It's called the spin tool. It's going to be Alt R. If you open up, if you open up your toolbar on the left, there will be a bunch of different options. Uh, I don't know what the default options are, but uh, if you click choose your angle, set your angle to be 360 because that is how much degrees are in a circle, complete circle, and check dupli. I don't know what, oh, duplicates, yes, we want that. Um, so make sure that's checked off, that's very uh, essential. And if your edges are aligned right, like at the right angle, then we can just up the count to whatever 360 divided by the amount of degrees your single spoke takes up. So I, I don't know what um, 360 divided by 7 is, but that's that's how much uh, our, our, apparently our single spoke is 51.42 degrees wide. So when times by 7 it equals 360. And the only downside to this is that it creates uh, duplicate vertices here. Uh, you could go ahead and uh, Alt-M to merge them all. Or um, if you just select everything, click spacebar to open up that search menu and type uh, remove doubles. Just click enter. See at top it removed 190 vertices so that uh, these are all a single um, those are all together now. So that's a, a cool way that you can model the wheel as well if you find the array modifier are kind of confusing. I do think it's a little bit more, um, the, the array modifier is a little more powerful. There's more options to play with. But um, this is a quick and easy way that I think I'm going to be using more often now. But, um, but you can model the tire the same way. I'm going to show you a different way to model the tire. Um, yeah, let's get started with that. So the first things first is we want a reference image for our tire. Um, in the form of a tire tire tread. You can look up whatever, if you just look up tire tread pattern, you will find a trillion of these. Uh, it doesn't really matter what you use. However, I'd recommend one with uh, not that much detail. Um, just for simplicity's sake, and then maybe if you feel comfortable doing something more complicated, you can. Um, but a lot of them are asymmetrical, so you can't. You have to model both sides by hand. You can't just mirror modifier it. Um, and each single tread, you duplicate it a bunch of times around in a circle. So if a single tread is really detailed and has a lot of geometry on it, that's going to multiply really, really fast, and your tires are going to be very, very dense geometrically wise. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and use this one um, from an old Blender Guru tutorial. I really like it. It's simple and easy. Uh, so I'm just going to drag that in as a background image and start modeling it from the top view. Um, I'm just going to go ahead and add in a plane. Um, we do want it to be mirrored because this one is indeed symmetrical. And just model a single a single tread. 
Now the only hard part about this is that what you do to the top, so up here, you have to do to the bottom because you want them to interlock sort of like a puzzle. So if I went like this, when it arrayed modifier, it would it would be like that and it wouldn't um, match up. But if we moved both of these down, and we have a modifier, it would match up like that. So that's sort of what we're going for here. So if you don't do that, it'll come out wrong and you will be confused. So basically what we want to do is just create a cross section of an, uh, a tire. So if we go to our top view, this is what the tread's going to look like. But if we go to our, say, front view, um, you sort of want it to come down like this, you know, actually I'll do that afterwards. Let's model these, all these parts first. Again, try to keep it uh, sort of simple geometry wise. This is already kind of complex, but it'll be be fine I think so I've added all these loop cuts in in order to just be able to extrude the portion oh, I want two more in here I guess so that's kind of a lot of geometry I think but it'll be alright so I'm just gonna select all the faces that I want to extrude up and I'm just going to extrude them up a little bit, and that is going to be our tire tread. Uh, so that's our cross section. And now, what I just want you to do is select. We have to give it some some height. So if we go to our front view, if we just sort of extrude it out like that, and that will be our tire. So tire tread. Uh, you could navigate these a little bit. Rotate them in, maybe narrow that out, something like that perhaps, maybe even bring this one down, and then these can come in like, whoop. and you can play around with it, um, I think that'll be our good, that'll be a good tire uh, design. Perhaps something like that will do. All right. So, how do we how do we do this? What we want to do is we want to go ahead and add an array modifier. Just change the offset so that it's going in the correct direction. And we just have to change this um, to a value where they will be pretty darn close. Point four nine. You can just play around with this. Um, it's a 0.5 is too much. 0 0.495. 0 0.494. 0 0.492. 0.492 is pretty darn close. And if we click merge, then they'll connect. And if we click first, last, then they will also connect. Um, now what we want to do is rotate this array modifier in a circle. Uh, actually, let's go ahead and enable smooth shading so that it's smooth along the sides. And you don't want those to be smooth, um, so you add it in your subsurface, it sort of at creates like way too much geometry. So um, I'd recommend you, oh, we actually do want to delete those vertices there. Um, if you add your subsurface um, modifier, it will sort of smooth things out as normal, but it'll also create like just way too much geometry. So I recommend not doing that. And if you just add uh, an edge split, then it'll, and if it's not going right, you can change the split angle, but it'll basically keep things that are smooth enough, smooth, and keep things that are sharp, sharp. And then you can decide what you want um, in there. 
So we want to make this go around in a circle, and we can do that using a curve um, Bezier circle. And if you're in your side view, you can just align to view, scale it up a bunch perhaps. And then if you just position this sort of like that, you can go ahead and add a new modifier to that tire tread that is going to be curve. Choose your Bezier circle as that uh, as that curve, and then what this does is if you change the um, size of the circle, shh, don't make sounds. Uh, you can change the size of the circle to choose how big you want each tread, and once you know how sort of like the dimensions of that, you can go ahead and add in your array modifier enough to complete that circle and then depending um, on that you can scale the tire just to get a little to get really close to that you can zoom in a lot and get it almost perfect this is overkill but you know That looks good. And you might even make it a little. No, nah, that's probably fine, I think. Uh, then what I do for this is I just select everything, use Shift D to make a backup and move it to a, um, a new layer so that I can just go ahead and apply these modifiers. Um, that you do want them in order, so make sure to do the mirror first, then the uh, array modifier, and then the curve. And as you can see, it is a very, it's a pretty dense circle. Um, it's a pretty dense tire. Um, so you, the more geometry or the less geometry you have, the the more optimized it would be. But I would not recommend this method for using a game engine or anything like that because of the high amount of geometry it takes up. Uh, you could probably just use a texture, a texture, a texture. Did I say it right? I think I said it right, but I don't know. Uh, use a texture for something like this. And then I'm just gonna position it um, on our wheels. Uh, if you open up your end toolbar and scroll all the way to the top, you can see the location of that wheel I'm just going to copy if you hover over and click control C you can um, copy and then you can paste it to the, um, the tires location and then just scale it into the correct size you might have to change the width of it um, a bit You can just sort of eyeball this. And then if you just uh, reapply a mirror modifier, I'll go over to that side. Alright, so like that's probably pretty, oh, maybe not on this side. Um, actually, no, that's fine. It's fine. It doesn't, the inside doesn't matter. Uh, and then I'm just going to go ahead and add in a, an array modifier to just a, a good old regular array modifier to position the, whoop, to position this at the other wheel. Pretty good. And when we put everything together, 
we got a fairly nice looking uh, wheel tire combo might even bring this out a little bit more Yeah, you can just mess around with the positioning, but that's how I have made tires, uh, so you have options on how to make them. Again, if you're using this for game engines, I'd recommend just using using some circles extruded without the entire tread texture or detail on it. Um, but if you're going for a high poly detailed model, this is definitely the way to go. Either the curve modifier with the array or the uh, spin tool. Um, I haven't used a spin tool very much, so I'm no master at that, but that's how I make tires. Uh, if you have any questions on it, I know this can be a little confusing with the uh, tons of modifiers, um, so if you have any questions or run, in, run into any difficulties, feel free to leave a comment or join the Discord, and I will um, can work it out. Uh, so yeah, in the next part, we'll go over... There are a couple other things we could model, such as um, like an underneath um, the car to hide some of the empty details, um, you know, brakes or stuff to hide in all the empty empty spaces sort of underneath and behind stuff. But, I mean, you should know how to model that uh, by now. Um, what I do for underneath is just a simple plane that just hides most of the stuff you don't want to see, um, with some simple extrusions and whatnot, brakes can figure it out I think um, and yeah that pretty much wraps up the the base of the modeling actually I mean again I'm sure there are other parts we could model um, but uh, I want to move on to texturing and materials um, so if you have any specific requests about what you want to get from that there's a lot that we could go over I can't go over everything regarding it um, so if you have anything specific you w want to know from that uh leave a comment below or join the discord talk to me and yeah i'll see you in the next part uh thanks for watching bye bye